The last episode we talked about how to record games on a PC. Today we're going to be talking about what you can do next. Look at this thing. Let's go give it a warm welcome. Videos about video games are a big deal and they're increasingly diverse. You've got incredible epic documentary series like the Double Fine Adventure. You've got game design analysis from the likes of Game Makers Talk It, where each video takes a deep dive into a single specific aspect of design. Or the Fail Forward series from Rock Paper Shotgun, which takes a positive look at when games just miss the mark on a particular feature. My name is Jade, and I haven't the foggiest how we're going to get out of here. You've got the growing intellectual movement with academic essays from channels like Feminist Frequency, and of course you've got the old guard of Let's Plays and detailed commentaries from the likes of PewDiePie and Christopher Odd. There it is! Thank you! Yes! we put links to all of those in the show notes, they are well worth watching. Now what we're not getting into today is the other side of game video which is live streaming. We're going to be talking about edited game videos, which is where you craft something new from the raw materials of your recorded gameplay. Here's the thing, if you're not live streaming, you might as well take advantage of editing to make your video as best as it can be. You can take footage from any point in a game, or even multiple games, and then use editing to put them all together. You can also use editing to take away the boring bits. Once you've recorded your game, you can import the video file into the free version of HitFilm Express, just as if you'd shot it using a real camera. Imported videos can be previewed in the trimmer, where you can choose to use specific parts rather than the entire clip. This makes it really easy to immediately trim off unwanted stuff, especially from the start and the end. It's how you can curate a new story or make a point from the raw footage you recorded. If you do something awesome in the game, or want to examine something in more detail, you can play that part of the clip multiple times. Or you can use the speed effect or the rate stretch tool in HitFilm 4 Pro to play a section in slow motion. Or if you're anything like me, you can sneakily remove all the bits where you really, really sucked. You're the editor, which means you have the power. It can be very easy to get caught up by resolutions when you're dealing with game footage. The thing is, standard HD resolution for video is 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080. Those are kind of the main resolutions you'll encounter on YouTube or if you're watching something on TV. And this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, that's what determines the shape of the frame, the rectangular shape. But not all computer monitors are 16 by 9, so my screen at home is actually a 16 80 by 1050 monitor, which means it's a really annoying 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And that means if I record game footage at the native resolution of my home computer, I'm going to end up with black bars down the side of the screen when I try and play it on YouTube. There's various solutions. The simplest one is to change your in-game resolution to a 16 by 9 aspect. If your monitor can't go up to 1920 by 1080, see if it can do something like 1280 by 720. And if the game's being fussy, look for the next highest 16x9 resolution. Once you're inside HitFilm, you can then right click on the clip on the timeline and fit it to the frame, or you can use the scale options in the controls panel to manually fine tune the clip's size. This can also be useful if you're actually doing a recording of a very old game that maybe only runs at lower resolutions. Of course, if you're scaling up, you will end up with a slightly softer image than if you'd recorded at a full native 1080p, but most people aren't going to notice that, especially if they're watching on a mobile device. All of the video recording tools we talked about in the previous episode have the ability to record microphone audio at the same time as in-game audio. Now if you're streaming a Let's Play, then it's really important to have an engaging commentary at the top. But if you're doing something more analytical, if you're going to edit your video, you don't have to do it all at the same time. Now, Maybe it's just my old brain, but I find it pretty hard to play a game while at the same time providing an insightful commentary. So for my first five minutes video series, I actually do it in two stages. Three, two, one, go. First, I record the game itself. I focus on playing the game without worrying about having to do a voiceover at the same time. After that, I then go back to my desktop and load up a program called Audacity which is a totally free, open source audio editor. 
that I connect my mic and get ready to record my voiceover. I usually decide the main points in advance. I don't script out the whole thing, but I do have an idea of what I want to say, and I have this open somewhere on the desktop for reference. Then I hit record in Audacity and simultaneously play the recorded video. This way my commentary is still timed up precisely with the recorded visuals, but I'm able to concentrate fully on providing a decent voiceover. Once I finish recording the audio, I trim it in Audacity and select the whole clip to normalize its volume. I also denoise it if needed. Audacity's denoiser is really great. Make sure you always record a few seconds of silence at the start of your voiceover so that you can then select it and use that as the noise profile. Audacity uses that noise profile to clean up the rest of the audio, making it sound nice and crystal clear. You can then export the audio as a new WAV file, ready to edit together with your footage. So back in HitFilm, I can import that new WAV and drop it onto the timeline with the video. A little bit of adjustment to sync it up with the right timing, and I've got my voiceover ready to go. Hi, I'm Simon Jones with another look at the first five minutes of a game. And this time we've got Grow Home. The nice thing about having the mic audio as a completely separate track is that I can adjust the volume of the in-game audio and the commentary individually, depending on what I want the viewer to be hearing. We have a whole other episode that's all about optimizing your videos to maximize YouTube exposure. Do make sure you give that entire episode a watch because it's packed full of juicy info. But the two main things to focus on for any video are having a compelling thumbnail and creating a good end plate to highlight your other content. HitFilm can help with thumbnail creation. You can find a good still from the video and create a title right inside HitFilm. To do this, create a new composite shot, then add a title layer, type in whatever you want, and you can adjust the size and the font that you're using. And once you're happy with it, you need to drop this back on top of your video on the editor. If your personality is important to your channel, it's probably a good idea to get your face onto the video thumbnail. Here I've got a photo of me, which I can roughly cut out using HitFilm's masking tools, and then simply drop it into the corner of the frame. Once I'm happy, I can go up to the Viewer Options menu and choose Export Frame to save this as a new image. End plates are useful for highlighting your other content. So on HitFilm videos, we always have this at the end which we use to point viewers at other videos or to tease an upcoming one. For one of my first five minutes videos, I used HitFilm 4 Pro's split screen effect to really quickly create a side-by-side -side glimpse of multiple videos. Once the video was on YouTube, I could set up annotations so that viewers could actually click to watch any one of those videos. After the last video, we had a ton of correspondence from you guys, full of interesting tips and recommendations for this kind of stuff. So a lot of people mentioned DX Tori, which is another alternative screen recorder. It's not something I've used myself, but it does look very capable, so it's one to try out and keep an eye on. Now, I also managed to raise the eyebrows of Norman Black, who wasn't entirely convinced by my idea to set the quality setting in Handbrake to RF0. His exact words were, Yikes! A Handbrake constant quality setting of zero is like swatting a fly with a shovel. Swatting a fly with a shovel will have consequences for your furniture, and a CRF of zero will have consequences with editing. So, uh, bowing to Norman's experience, I decided to ask him for his own personal recommendations. Here's what he said. He suggested setting the RF to 16 or 17, activating the fast decode option, switching the profile to high, and setting the encoder level to auto. He also uses a custom line of extra options for setting keyframe intervals, and I've included this in the show notes down below so that you can copy and paste it to give it a try. This will keep performance good without creating gigantic files. Big thanks to Norman and everybody else who commented on that last video. We put out a new episode every Tuesday, so hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out. In my next episode, I'm going to be back to talking about filmmaking and visual effects, so I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into that again. In the meantime, many thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.